By the end of today, we should have a working candy claw machine, but we've got to do all the wiring. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, today we're getting really close to completing our candy claw project, but we have to run all of the wires. We have to run wires for the motors, the end stops, and the controller deck, as well as hook up all the lights that we added. Now there's going to be a lot of crimping of connectors. Remember, I'm using DuPont connectors for all the connections back to the main board. Some are a little easier to do than others. And as you saw before, we did solder a few things, but hopefully we won't do much of that today. It'll be just crimping connectors, building them, and plugging them into the board. Then we'll flash the firmware. Now the firmware is a completely different subject. I know I've mentioned this before, but I am going to do one more video on just how I configured the whole thing so you can do whatever you want, customize it, and you'll have a copy of that. So let's jump to the wiring and see just how this is all going to go down. Now on to wiring, probably my least favorite step in the whole build, but it has to be done. So we've got four motor wires for our NEMA 17s. These are two meter in length, but you're going to want to cut them down just to make it look a little bit better. So we're going to have to crimp on a bunch of DuPont connectors because that's the connector we're using for our build because we're using ramps. So we'll work on that. We're going to have to have three end stops. I'm using the ones that are on the PCB. These are very cheap, common. They usually come with a piece of wire, but for most of them, you're going to have to add wire to it. Again, we're going to have to add a custom connector to make that work. All the PCBs, you're going to need an M3 by 6 millimeter screw. I tried to work in a 10 millimeter to keep it standard, but they're just too long. So you're going to have to have eight of those. Now for wire management, I'm going to use some 3 millimeter nylon filament, just like the old school printers, with some wire wrap. Now this works really well for X, Y, and Z. It's just to add some strain relief so you're not bending that wire over and over. I have some spots where we're going to zip tie it down. You will need a handful of zip ties. It doesn't work so good for our claw motor. Now, it will get us by, but it's just stiff enough to actually make the claw rotate a bit. I would much rather go with some kind of curly cord. But for this build, we're going to continue like this. And then maybe in the next version, I'll come up with a better solution. So, totally usable, but it could be better. So let's get an idea of where the end stops are going to be. Some of these you're going to want to add to the spiral wrap with your motor cable, some not. You can run them outside. So let's get an idea of where they're at so you'll understand how we're going to make these different wire wraps. Let's deal with our X end stop first. It's over here in what I would call the minimum position. Y would actually be in the max position, but that's in the firmware. No big deal. But this is really easy. You can just set your end stop on here, use two of your M3 by six millimeter screws and attach it. It'll just thread into the printed part. Once you get it installed, make sure your carriage does collide with it correctly. It does, we have a click. So we should be good there. Now, given its wire location, it's going to join the loom after this X carriage wire. So we have our motor over on this side, over on that end for X. And we have our Z motor that's going to float on this carriage. So it has to be able to go all the way to that side as well. So it has to go over this direction. So we're going to want to bundle those two motor cables in and then we'll catch this end stop wire on the way back to the main board, which is back this direction. I'll show you as I do it. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what we're going to have to do. Now let's take a look at the Z end stop. Now the Z end stop is going to go right underneath our string wheel that pulls up the claw. It goes right down here, but there's a cover that goes over it to keep the string from catching on it. So go ahead and attach your end stop with your M3 by six millimeter screws, and then go ahead and attach your short wire. We're just going to lengthen the wires that came with the end stops. We might as well use that JST connector. But just go ahead and put that on because it's kind of tricky to put on after you put your cover on. And then that cover that we put the string through already when we attach the string, that just slides on. You can kind of push it down over the end stop. And then there's two M3 by six millimeter screws on the back of this cover that just hold the cover on. They go in the back of the holes that we just used to attach the end stop. So just put those in 
and then you should be good with your Z end stop. While we're here at Z, you can go ahead and attach one of your motor cables. We'll tile this down after we wrap it. And same for our X motor cable. Now, while we're running all these cables, we are going to need one for the claw, of course. So it's going to travel down the same path, right past your Z motor, to the claw cable. But there's going to have to be some slack. So you're going to have to leave enough slack for it to get to the bottom of the machine. The claw actually sits pretty nicely just on its claw like that on the bottom. So that will give you an idea of how long that cable needs to go down in there. You're never going to want it any longer than that because whatever you're trying to grab is going to sit on top of that base. So just be aware of where that location is. There's no end stop or anything. That's the only wire that needs to go down there. You can even zip tie that off right now to the Z motor holder. That holder we attach to the back of the motor just so that you always have the same length. And then your X end stop is going to be the same thing. Sets on your PCB right here. Just make sure that it does collide and kick that off. It does. And then you can go ahead and put your wire on. Now the only difference on this one is I would say you could run it underneath your extrusion. You don't need to wrap it up. Just run it the outside of the machine over to the control board. So tuck it under here. You're going to have to add some length either way, but there's no need to wrap that one up. And then the Y motor, it's the easiest one. We can just go ahead and plug that in, but this will just run on the outside of the frame. You can tuck it here in the extrusion. You can do the top or the side. Doesn't really matter for this one. So I'm going to start by extending this Y end stop wire. Again, we're just going to run it down the back. We'll run both the motor for Y and the end stop in the same track here. But it already has a DuPont connector on the end, and that's what I want to use. So I'm going to save that since I already have to lengthen the wire anyway. So I'm just going to cut it here, and then I'll strip and solder in another section of wire to get me over to the main board. So I'm just going to use that 30 gauge wire to extend these. I'm just going to solder some length on the connector here and then use some heat shrink to cover it up. Every wire set is going to be different, so how much length, that's kind of up to you. I'm just kind of holding it up to the machine to get enough to get over to the main board. So for this one, I just extended the wires, and then I ran the Y motor and Y end stop on the back of the extrusion and using our 3D printed covers like we did before. It turns out to be a pretty nice install. So for your X wire, I just recommend you put it in this top track with one of your 3D printed parts. It shouldn't need a zip tie or anything. But then when we get over to the other side of the machine, we'll want to include our Z and Z end stop wires. Now these have to move side to side so you don't want them tied down to your X. This really doesn't move. And then we'll continue on and we'll pick up our X end stop wire as well. So let's handle X. So that takes care of X, but we need to add a bunch of wire to our Z end stop. It's way too short. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to put some nylon in here and we're going to spiral wrap this whole thing. And when we get over to this end, we'll catch X and the X end stop, and then we'll head back towards the control board. All right. So we've added some length to our end stop wire. I have zip tied our Z wire, our Z end stop and our claw wire right here on the Z mount, the one on the back of the motor. And then we're going to start wrapping these with some spiral wrap and nylon. So I've got the claw motor and the Z motor spiral wrapped with nylon all the way back to here. You can see the claw here. Now we can pick up our X motor and our X end stop and then head back to the control board. I will have to add some wire to that X end stop. Then after that, you've picked up your end stop wire, your X motor wire, everything's all in this one loom. There's some holes in this X idler part. You can stick a zip zip through and then tie it down for some strain relief while it's moving around. When you tie it down, just make sure there's a little bit of slack in this wire here. You just don't want it to unplug from the motor. Make sure you have it all the way up front against the end stops. This is as far as it should go. And then the rest will head on back to the control box. So I've got all the wire wrapped back to the control box. I did just realize that the control box is flipped upside down. So I'll have to change that. But I did make a few changes as far as how the wires run. The Y end stop being the biggest one. I had it running on top here. I switched it to the bottom 
just because it had a chance of getting pinched by the carriage when it came to home. So I changed that up, but you're gonna have to play with that a little bit, what makes sense as far as wire management, just to get it looking good. So next up, after I switch the control box, we're going to have to clean up all these wires. A lot of these motor cables are way too long, so I wanna cut them, put a DuPont connector on them, get them looking nice, so they fit nice on the machine, everything's nice and tidy. So more work to do. So basically all we're doing now is cutting the wire down and putting some new pins on it so we can use our DuPont connectors. Now some side tips with a lot of these motor wires, they are the hard style wire, not the silicone we were using before. So the pin won't cut into the insulation. You're gonna have to strip a little bit off the end before you put your pin on. Also, there are two different types of stepper motors that I've run into. And one will turn when it's wired a certain way and then you're gonna have to flop one of the coils to get them to turn on the other style. I grabbed all of these motors out of the scraps bin. So I don't know which kind or which, we might have a mix of both. So you might potentially have to swap some pins around. Just be aware of that depending on what kind of motors you use. If we run into that, I'll show you what the difference is. Now for the controller wires that we ran in the first video, we've already got pins on those. You're gonna to wanna to build a 10 pin connector because it's gonna go on AUGS2 on your ramps board. And it, those are 10 pin. So building a 10 pin just makes it easier to keep track of. Now I am going to let you have the diagram of how I did this, but you're gonna to have to wire it in a certain way. So the bottom left, I'll show you as I plug these in. Bottom left pin is gonna be your positive pin. That first one there, the one above it is your negative pin. The one next to the positive pin, that's gonna be your green wire. Green goes to the X on the analog joystick. The one next to the green wire is your black and yellow wire. That's for the Y on the joystick. The one above your black and yellow, this one right here, will be the straight yellow wire that's your claw button pin, and the one right next to that one is your blue wire. That's your start button pin. There's a finished look at that connector. Again, I'll leave the diagram so it's a little easier to decode. So all of our connectors are on. I highly recommend you mirror whatever the connector was you cut off. So mine were red, blue, green, black. No matter which type of motor we have to set up for, make them all the same to start out with, that way you'll have a method of changing them when you need them. Also, I suggest numbering them. I like to put one slash on X, two on Y, three on Z, and then four on E or your claw motor, just so you know where they run. The last tip I can give you when you're switching out plugs like this is check all of your connections after you're done with your multimeter. That is gonna save you all kinds of time troubleshooting anything after we get everything together. So just side tips, but all of the motor connections are done. We're almost ready to start setting up the board. So I had to adjust that board case in Fusion and reprint it, no big deal, but it does have a cover. It'll just slide on from the side. And then this part here, you can put a zip tie through to secure your wires. I'll show you that here more in just a moment. What we're concerned with right now is we need some stepper drivers. For my build, I just went with 16 times micro stepping. You could use anything you want, but usually just the default on a lot of my boards, all of the jumpers are on, and I'm using old school drivers. I'm just using four A4988s I found in the scrap bin. You will need to adjust your current. I would start at something like seven, 800. The one for the claw will have to be a little bit higher. That's pretty much all the torque one of these has to be able to open that claw. So you'll have to adjust that but we'll just go ahead and mount all these on the board, make sure they're the correct direction, line up that step dur pin. We'll just populate all four, X, Y, Z, and extruder. And once your drivers are on, you can go ahead and start plugging in all of your motors. Now on ramps, if this is the route you're gonna go, probably not a lot of folks are. One of the main reasons, I've probably mentioned this before, I'm going with it is because it does have analog pins, but you will need the adapter for your LCD screen if you choose to use one. Remember that old school L? You're gonna need one of those. And once your L is on, then I would suggest you go ahead and plug in your controller wires. That 10 pin connector that we made, it will go in AUGS2. Come around to the side so you can get a little better view of that. This is AUGS2 right here. 
you want your power pin to be on the edge of the board on this side. It'll go just like that. Those two outer pins, that one there, that's power. The one below it, that's ground. That's how you know you have it set up correctly. Then we can go ahead and plug in our motor wires. We'll just do Y because it's easy. Now when you're plugging all these in, I suggest you plug them all in the same way. Make red either right or left, but do them all right or left. That way it's easier to troubleshoot going forward. And you can always either flip the cable over to change the motor direction or do that in your firmware if you wish. But we'll just plug in Y and then X, then Z. Ramps has two Z headers. They're in parallel. Just use whichever one you wish. And then E0 for our claw. There's all the motors plugged in. Then we can plug in our end stops. Y in my configuration, you're going to want to use Y max. It just makes a little more sense when you're setting the board up, setting up the firmware. Those are your in stop pins right there. The fourth one down, that's Y max. Right there, from this angle, power is going to be up here, signal down here. Then we can plug in our X, it will go on the minimum. And then Z will go on min Z, right next to that Y max. And there's all your end stops. I think I had that Z motor on the wrong pins the first time, but that's where it goes. And now that everything else is plugged in, then I'd go ahead and plug in your EXP one and two for your LCD. They kind of get in the way of some of the other wires. It's just easiest to do them last. Now we're gonna need some power wires so that we can power our board up down to our PSU here. I'm just using some 18 gauge. I've got the blade type connectors on one side for the PSU, and then I've got ferrules for the ramp side. Just use these outer two right here. They'll be just fine for this project. We don't have a heated bed. Negatives on the board edge, positives next to that. We don't want to plug it into our PSU quite yet because we do have a cover for that. Now at this point, if you're comfortable, you think you've got everything correct, you can go ahead and put the case on. I'd probably leave it off until I tested it, but just to show you what that's going to look like, it just slides on. It might be a touch tight. It's going to go on just like that. Then I'll probably put a little bit of extra spiral wrap, run it down in here, and then there's holes to run zip ties through here so you can zip this wire tight to the printed part. There's also some holes in the top and bottom you can put a zip tie in to keep this on there permanent. So there we go. There's the whole controller board. Now let's go ahead and set up the PSU. For the PSU, so we have a power switch and we can plug it and unplug it as we want to, I'm going to use this receptacle. This is how you want to wire it. I just used the wire I had. It's probably overkill. This is 16 gauge. I just crimped a bunch of blade connectors on there. And then this style fork blade connector on the other side so it'll go to the PSU. But if you're doing this type, here's what you're going to want to do. You have your line jumped over to your switch. Then you have your neutral jumped over to your switch. And then a ground lead. And then these down here, line and neutral over to your PSU. And I do have a PSU cover to keep everyone safe. That's this right here. Your wires can run in here for both your LEDs and your controller board. And then you have a hook right here that will hook on one of the posts on this PSU if you're using the one that I'm using. And then a hole in the side for an M3 screw to secure it. So this will just snap fit right in here. Then we can go ahead and install it on the side of our machine. The first one's going to be line, then neutral, then ground. Then we can run our board wires through the bottom of our case. The two next to ground are the negative, two over here are positive. So let's grab one of each. Then we also want to crimp a couple of connectors on our LED wires, and then we'll hook them up the same way. If you remember from before, I used yellow for positive and green for our negative. Then we're all done. You're ready to go ahead and slide your cover on. And then there's one hole over here. You can put an M3 by 10 millimeter screw in it to secure it. And a quick note on firmware. If you really do want to build one of these Candy Claw machines, I'll have the firmware for you. You can just use my file, upload to your board, and you should be done. But again, you have to do the specific board that I'm using, like ramps. 
Now, if there's other boards out there, if there's interest, I can flash another firmware and try to help you test that. But I will do a whole video on how I got the firmware set up in case you want to customize yours. So just a few more things to finish up and then we can give it a test. After a couple of zip ties and some cleanup, you'll be ready to go. Now we need to flash some firmware. So you're going to want to cable up USB and flash Marlin over to it. A couple of quick final steps before we power on. You can go ahead and slide your final piece of acrylic in here after you've already loaded it up with your candy or whatever you'd like. It's just going to slide in here in the back. And again, sometimes I put screws in it, sometimes I don't. It just depends what you want to do. If you want a little more finished look, go ahead and put your M5 screws in here. But most of the time, it fits just fine without it, and you have easy access if you need to open it up later. In the STLs, there's also a little cup available here that you can just attach to that inside extrusion with some T-nuts and some M5 screws if you want to. I'm also looking at maybe adding a door design in here so some of the toys don't fall out after you've grabbed them. And it's time for a test drive. If we got everything set up correctly, all your motors are going in the right direction. If they're not, you can adjust it in the firmware or just flip the plug over. If they're stuttering, remember it might be that different type of stepper. Just flip two of the wires and you should be all set. Now again, this isn't a perfect design. It's a lot better than the original. There are some changes I'd like to make, but it's totally functional just like this. So let's give it a test run. We'll hit start. You can program any tone you want. I actually cut this down. We've got the joystick working. And then when you find the place you want, you just hit claw. It'll open the claw. It'll go all the way to the bottom of the machine. Again, you adjust that in firmware, how far it goes. It'll close the claw. At home Z, because of that end stop up there on top, it'll head over to the candy well. And I apologize for the glare. It'll go down and then it'll open the jaws one more time. So hopefully you won something and it just released it into the well. It'll go back home and it'll play one more tone and then it's ready for the next player. And there it is, the Christmas Basement Candy Claw Machine is up and running. Now, this should get you going. This should be everything you need to build this version. I don't know if this will be the final version, but it's definitely usable in this state. Now, the firmware is going to be the question mark here, and I'm going to give you all of my firmware. You can go compile it and upload it to your board, but there's lots of different types of board you could use, so it just depends on how you want to utilize the machine and how you build yours. Hopefully you can just use my hex file for the most part. You could even edit some things using G-code commands if you had to. But again, a lot of these are going to be custom built. So that's the final thing that we're going to have to do. I'm going to do one whole video explaining all the things that I did in the firmware. But it's pretty much done for the most part. That will be it for today. And I'll see you really soon on the next one.